The last few days have been more than one's mind can imagine, leaving some of us drained, tired, angry, disillusioned, and disgusted. We face the reality of the ugliness that exists in our society in the form of two systems. One for those whose transgressions are disregarded and forgiven without a second thought, handled with kid gloves and coddled regardless of their offense. And there is another system which has shown no, no mercy, kindness or empathy, where dogs and water hoses, batons and bullets have been used upon a people. As we try to explain to our kids, family, and neighbors that which cannot be explained, to resort to the one word that seems almost overused and yet it speaks to the disparities in our society, racism. This great American experiment has not been kind to people of color or those who would align themselves with us. It has not been kind to the LGBTQT community, differently enabled veterans or religious believers of all faiths and walks and those who choose not to believe. And the list goes on. We are the other. Those who have earned the right to be here, but treat it as though we have not suffered under the injustice of the slavery and Jim Crow laws. Fought and died for civil rights, fought in wars, which we were not honored. No joy in these endeavors for the pain they have brought still continues to this day. We are still systematically denied in many ways our rights as full citizens to vote, live where we choose, love who we choose to love. It's not our promised land. It has yet to live up to its creed. It is our battleground, a battlefield for which we fight for the right to be treated with dignity and respect. As we watch in horror the historical event of our times, of our times when the people's house was desecrated with antipathy to our entire system of governance, we sat silently, weeping in anger over such a disgraceful act those who would be so bold as to commit this act of sedition, insurrection, remind us that there is no system of justice when justice is impunity disregarded. There is no justice in America until all those who are so bold as to commit such an act are held accountable. When hateful relics like us Confederate flag are carried proudly through the halls of the people's house while America's flag is trodden underfoot and ripped asunder by the sheer act of insurrection. What can America say to us who would speak to There is no appeasement for such a thing as this. You bind our hands with your boundless words and cast us into the prison of insignificance. You create rules and laws which constrain and restrict us, and yet those of you who would act with impunity take no, resp take no responsibility and are not held to account. We say that we are a nation of laws, yet we who are considered other, lesser, who are made by the hands of your same creator and in this image have never completely freedoms of this nation, as in the days when Jim Crow ruled the South, men in office of every level and power of every sort, from churches, storefronts, corporate boards, seats of government in small towns and cities on a hill, aided and abetted the unholy destruction, holy destruction of black and brown life. Shall we still sit silently now, in this time, our time, and allow the tyranny to go unchecked? Will we allow our children to live under the hollow words of freedom 
liberty and liberty and justice for all, or will we struggle to create an impartial society that gives credence to the hope which we all seek? We can surely see that we are no longer the city on a hill, for the city has been brought low, goes under its own weight and sits in its own ashes. We must remain vigilant. We must continue the never-ending struggle that has beset us since we set foot on these shores as property. We must continue to fight for a government that is for the people, that is for the people, by the people. We must stand with the same energy and vigor of those brave souls in Georgia who stood against the tyranny of lies and conspiracy to fight for the opportunity to have a say in this democracy. We must demand our rights as citizens of a higher calling through our vote and peaceful protests. If freedom shall ring, it will only ring because we make it so. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. It must work like the clay in a potter's hand, broken and shapen to perfection. I say to you, we are not that far off, and yet we are infinitely far away from the hope we seek. For there are those who will stand idly by, like, stone, like stones in a river, diverting the flow of history. We must remove those stones and let the freedom, justice, and equality flow freely. We